Greetings sailors and welcome to a viewer replay courtesy this time of Kairon who is playing here in the Salt Louis, the tier 9 French heavy cruiser. As Kairon noted in the email they sent to me, I don't seem to have featured a lot of French cruiser games and it's not by design. I think there is always that natural bias I have towards battleships and certainly there have been a few French battleship games featured on my channel since they arrived in the game, but it's not like I haven't been playing the French cruisers. In fact, I rather like them. I'm at the Charles Martel myself at the moment and steadily working towards this ship here. In fact, I think this might be a grind I'm almost finished with as of making this video. It's either that or the rune where I've nearly finished. I think it probably will be the Charles Martel because I've been grinding it for a while. I could have been finished with it already, but it's not a ship I play all that often. But that said, I've still had some decent games in, well, everything since the Tier 6. It's one of those ones I got the uh, the Tier 6 from uh, one of the previous winter campaigns anyway, and so I played through that, played through the Algerie, which is a very capable Tier 7 cruiser, and now on the Martel, and then of course you get to this. And when you look at the stats, it doesn't look like that big of an upgrade from the tier 8. It's got the same number of guns, it's got the same base reload, it's got a little bit more health, it does get more range, it does get slightly better sigma. Probably the biggest overall improvement is in fact in the AA, but that's not going to be a factor in this game at all. It, it just isn't, there isn't a carrier. There is, however, a certain level of benefit just from being a tier 9. From one thing, you get an extra slot, you get the, the tier 9 and 10 module slot, and Kieran has used theirs to get the main battery modification 3, which takes their reload down from 11 seconds to, it's around 9.6. So it's not even adrenaline rush or anything like that that's speeding up their reload, it's just that alone, although they might have adrenaline rush as well. And of course, also being a tier 9 cruiser, you get to have a heal. So those are the two big improvements, the two big upgrades. The extra range is still useful though, because that is really what this ship, what this line does. Well, the heavy cruisers anyway, the, uh, the, the light cruisers are lower down, you do play maybe a little bit differently. They are basically long range fire spammers. They excel at open water kiting. And of course, they are greatly aided in that by having the speed boost available, or should that be Spood Beast? <laughs> Kieran does in fact also have the uh, module that upgrades your speed boost duration as well, so it's not just the standard three minutes in this case. And that is a good one to save for your French cruisers at the higher tiers, once you get access to that consumable, because it's a very, very useful thing at times. Just being able to get that extra kick of speed really does help you throw off enemy shots. And sometimes it's not even that, sometimes it's just the ability to relocate faster, but in this case it is going to be more in terms of helping him throw off enemy fire. Now it's not any more particularly armoured than uh, a lot of the other tier 9s, like say the Ibuki, which is also quite known for being squashy, but this just does better at long ranges basically, and along with the reload booster as well, it can kick out a fairly dangerous volume of fire over the course of a battle. That wasn't always true, the reload booster is a relatively late addition to this line, and in fact when I was looking through my replays to see, just idly out of curiosity, which French cruiser replays I might have, I, I do have a Martel replay, but it's before the reload booster was actually introduced to the, uh, the French cruisers. So <laughs> it definitely looks a bit dated in that regard uh, these days, but it is still quite a good game. I'll have to show it at some point, because... Uh, it has been sat there for a while, but I, I, I've got a fair few replays that have been sat there for a while, so it's not unique in that regard. So, so far, Kieran has just been doing what you do in a high-tier French cruiser, keeping uh, to uh, at least a medium range, 
and just pouring in fire on well hopefully unsuspecting ships not really unsuspecting that's not the right word but ships that are occupied with other things and in this case he's actually moved forwards to uh, the middle of the bee cap here uh, on uh, islands of ice to basically take advantage of that island that's just ahead of him because it it blocks the fire of everybody else that's south of the bee cap which is actually quite a fair few of the enemy team it's the biggest concentration of enemy ships and just the fact that they are still south of the B-Cap being held back by inferior numbers of Karen's team, well, you can already see the impact that's had in terms of the relative amounts of points each team has. There's a very good chance those ships north of A are going to go down just through sheer weight of long-range fire. And in fact, you can see the, the Ismo's almost dead. The Cleveland's not doing so well. We don't really get a, a look at the De Grossa, but uh, I think they're getting fairly well pounded as well. But just the passivity of the, the team south of A, that's going to cost this enemy team badly in terms of points. This isn't one of those completely one-sided games, though. This is going to turn into one of those games where it is actually quite even in terms of uh, the ships being traded basically all the way through the game but because Karen's team takes those cap points and holds those cap points the enemy team just aren't able to get ahead on kills enough to make up the difference because they're trading evenly on ships they aren't it's not one of those games where one team grabs the cap points early on but then gets absolutely slaughtered because it can happen that way now in his eagerness to try and get some shots on that daring Karen makes pretty much the biggest mistake you'll see him make during this entire game it's mostly fairly flawless it's mostly fairly textbook I would say in fact, it's already up to almost 100k damage. But uh, in his eagerness, in his uh, focus on that daring, he gives a bit too much broadside, takes a bit too much of a risk, and although it does get away with it, uh, that could have been very nasty. That could have ended him right there, because there's still quite a lot of ships around the A-cap. In fact, most of his teammates are now dead. Now he does briefly have a fair bit of focus uh, on him, as you can see via the, uh, the, the skill indicator there. But fortunately for him, he did have a bit of a respite with some of the enemy ships focusing and competing to uh, get the kill on that Cleveland who was low health. And so that bought him a little bit of a window. But now the Cleveland's dead, they're pretty much all going to be turning their attention to him. And so he's going to have to be paying very careful attention to his uh, manoeuvring. He's going to have to dodge the incoming fire as best he is able. But this is a fairly good situation for this ship to be kiting away from enemies who are firing at you and just playing with the range, playing with the speed and manoeuvrability. You might still get unlucky with RNG. You might still get a stray battleship shell going into your citadel and taking off a huge chunk of health all at once. But so far he's been quite lucky in that regard. He has still lost some health in the process of doing this, but as I pointed out before, one of the big differences between this and the Martel is this gets a heal. That heal does make a really big difference. So they are about 400 points ahead. The teammates that were pushing down through C have basically mopped up everything except that Republic and are now pushing across but they have suffered some attrition themselves in the process. It's still pretty much dead even on ships. So uh, the more damage that Kieran can do here the more time he can buy for his allies to uh, make their way across it's going to benefit the team greatly. And if he can get some kills along the way, like that Donskoy, then that will also help things along greatly. The Musashis, though, uh, if those hit him, you know, <laughs> that's just going to be nasty, those 18-inch guns. So he does have to be particularly careful at this point while they're both focusing on him. But although the Republic did 
throw one or two salvos his way, they now seem to be largely occupied with the ships pushing from the east, so he doesn't have to worry about that, at least. Likewise, the Ibuki, which is the uh, sole remaining cruiser, well, they're much too far away to pose a threat. So he can basically play around with the edge of his range and just pelt these Masashis with all of the HE shells. And they really can't do much about it. And this ship, and particularly the one that comes after it, the Henri Catra, in this kind of late game situation, if they are left alive to just run around and pelt things from range, that is particularly dangerous if you happen to be facing it in a battleship. High tier French cruisers, if you can knock them out earlier on, then it's a good idea to do so. But if they're being played well, it's quite hard to do so. Well, that also goes for, say, you know, the Zhao and the Hindenburg as well. But they don't have the legs that the French cruisers do just because of that speed boost consumable. They don't have that ability to zoom around and throw off shots. You can, of course, even amplify that somewhat by taking the uh, engine modification, which will uh, increase the rate at which you accelerate. And that can be particularly handy if you are sitting still and suddenly slam into forward gear with the speed boost going, you're going to be able to throw off a lot of shots that way, although it's a slightly risky strategy, but less so than in other cruisers. I don't know if he has that mod enabled though. Some you can tell, like for instance the speed boost mod or the, uh, the main battery mod that gives him the decreased reload for increased turret traverse, which you can then offset with expert marksmen anyway, that's quite a good one to have on high tier ships, but uh, sometimes you just you can't otherwise tell how somebody has their ship set up. So the Masashis, having turned their attention to the east, well they've been ignoring Kairin, which gives him a perfect opportunity to just sit here and keep spitting fire at them. But it's been less good for his allies, who are getting fairly chewed up by those nasty 18-inch guns. In terms of points, though, I mean, the Daring is trying to cap B, but they have such a healthy lead. And we're getting towards the end of this match now. There's just over six minutes left. The enemy team would basically have to kill them all to win. And they've maybe left it a bit late <laughs> to, uh, to, to try and do that at this point. If this was battleships facing battleships, then the enemy team, I think, would have a much better chance at this stage. Because it's a lot harder to get unspotted. But because we have things like the Shima left and the, the Worcester, uh, the Salt Louis itself can be made to be reasonably stealthy. It, w it won't be hard for him to drop off the enemy uh, team's vision if he needs to. At this stage, he could just cease fire, go dark, and try and stay alive. But they're not quite at that stage yet. Sometimes that is the correct thing to do, is just to cease firing and disappear and let the points carry you to victory. But... Uh, no, there's still a the scope, there's still an opportunity to do damage here, and he's fully taking advantage of that. So although we've come down to four versus three, although in terms of kills this is very close, in terms of points, they've basically won already. Kieran's teammates would have to massively screw up. Which is kind of what the Turpits is doing, to be honest. They're charging in against the Musashi, against the... Uh, the Ibuki, and they are going to go down, but the Shima's still alive, and Kairon has absolutely no intention of giving his ship away, as you'll see. So, yeah, barring Kairon and the Shima just suddenly both losing their minds, they have won. So with that Turpit's out of the way, Kairon is suddenly going to be a much more interesting target, although the Shima obviously gets briefly air spotted and uh, takes a bit of fire from the Ibuki. But this is giving Kairon some nice broadside shots, although he 
doesn't quite lead some of these salvos enough to uh, account for the Ibuki's manoeuvring. So although he does get some citadels, he could be leading these a little bit more and he might have gotten some more AP damage out of it. That was also his, uh, I think, his last reload booster. I haven't even been paying attention to his use of reload boosters in, in this particular game, but they have helped him kick out extra damage at times. But uh, even without that, he's managed to take down this Ibuki's health to... Uh, well, for them, dangerously low levels, and we can fairly safely assume they've probably burned their heals by this point. So, uh, if he can just keep pounding them, he can get them dead. Which was obviously a grammatically truly excellent use of English. The bigger threat is still definitely the Musashi, but he's going to get a stroke of luck here. He sets a double fire with that salvo. And now he's dropped off the enemy's uh, uh, cone of vision. He can just let that fire do its work. Clearly the Ibuki didn't have the damage control party available. And although fires don't affect cruisers as badly, the fact that RNG gave him a double fire, that was enough to get the kill. And with that final kill, well, that has pushed them very close to a thousand points. So although this Musashi is still fairly healthy, although there's a good two and a half minutes on the clock, this is basically the game. Although you might get this cap, you might get a, a capping flag out of it. There we go, just before the end. So that'll be a bit of extra XP, which is quite nice. So that was a high caliber and a witherer. Nearly a quarter of a million damage done which just goes to show you how dangerous these ships can be if they are left sufficiently unmolested and are played sufficiently well. And that huge chunk of damage basically <laughs> ensured him easily a place at the top of the team, and it was over 3,000 base XP, which is an incredibly impressive result. When we get to the damage results, though, we can see that that was boosted quite a bit by the number of fires, over a hundred thousand fire damage alone, but that's still outweighed by the amount of damage they did with the guns. Just over a hundred thousand with the HE and another thirty-five thousand with the AP shells. So that was a pretty good French cruiser game. That's how you play French cruisers. If you were in any doubt about how to do it, just basically do it like that. But try not to make that one blunder that Kieran made where they focused on the uh, the daring a little too hard and could have gotten spanked very hard for it, but instead got a bit lucky and were able to live and do oh so much more damage. And although they didn't get that many kills, yeah, the amount of health they sapped from the ships that were on this flank undoubtedly heavily contributed towards the eventual victory. I was also quite pleased to see that for the most part the people in the, the chat, those that were uh, using the uh, the in-game chat, were fairly positive. They were congratulating each other for a very close hard-fought game. But although it was close on ships, it wasn't really that close in the scheme of things. The enemy team ultimately did give that away where we had a situation where there was just so many of them being passive on one side, not using their numbers advantage, not pushing through, and ultimately that cost them the game. But that's not to diminish Kieran's achievement. That was a very, very good high-tier cruiser game. So hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you did, you can do all the usual things down underneath it, and of course, as always, stay tuned for more.